Okay, people have been asking for this one for a while. So here it is. Let's talk about the op amp or the operational amplifier. What it is, is a component made out of a couple of transistors and a few resistors that takes an input voltage and amplifies it. But it's an incredibly versatile component. And it's called an operational amplifier because these can be used to do actual mathematical operations. These were actually the backbone of the very first analog computers. And they can be used to do all sorts of things, including integration, which is pretty crazy. This is how the component is drawn here. What we have are two inputs and they are given the symbol plus and minus. So these are our inputs. You can just call these positive and negative inputs, but sometimes you might see them called the non-inverting input and the inverting input. And we'll get on to what that means in a bit. This is our output here. That's where the amplified output comes out of. And in order to take an input and amplify it, we do need a power supply, as it were. And that's what these two lines coming out of the side are. Sometimes you might see them connected to a circuit, but more often than not, you'll just see them coming out like this. And you might see something like plus 9 volts and minus 9 volts. In other words, it's connected to something that can provide a potential of plus 9 volts or minus 9 volts or anything in between. So in other words, the maximum positive voltage you can have out of this op amp is 9 volts and maximum negative voltage is minus 9 volts. So just because you have a plus here and a minus here, that doesn't mean that you always have a positive voltage going in here and a negative voltage going in here. No, what the op amp does is take the difference between the two voltages going into these two inputs and it amplifies that. So we can say that the output voltage is equal to the difference in the inputs and it times it by this amplification factor. So let's say that the input going in here is 5 volts and going in here we have 2 volts. That means that the difference in input is going to be 3 volts. So what the op amp does is take that 3 volts and amplify it by this factor here. However, here's the thing, is that this amplification is generally something like times 10 to the 6. So whatever difference you have between the voltages, an op amp will usually amplify it by a factor of millions. So let's say we take our three volts there and then times 10 to the six, well, we'd have an output of three million volts. But we know that we've only got this maximum plus nine volts or minus nine volts available. So that means that obviously I'm just going to get this value out here. So because the amplification factor is usually so big, that means that the output is nearly always saturated. So in this case, we'd either get plus nine volts minus 9 volts out of the output. In order to get anything in between plus 9 volts and minus 9 volts, we'd have to have such a small difference between these that it's very, very unlikely. So we assume that in every single case with an op-amp that we have an output that is saturated. So we can say that the output is definitely going to be this or this. So you probably figured this out, that if the difference is negative, and that's because the minus input, the inverting input, you can maybe see why it's called the inverting input now because it's swapping it from plus 9 to minus 9. Minus input is greater than the positive input. So what kind of circuit can we use this in? Let's have a look. Like I said, op amps can be used in all kinds of different situations, but generally in your exams you'll see them being used with potential dividers. And if you haven't seen my potential divider video, then click on the link in the description and it'll take you to that. So here we go. Here's my op amp in the middle here. And there's my plus 9 volts, minus 9 volts. There's my output. And I'm going to draw my two rails, as we usually have with potential divider circuits. So I'm going to draw one set of resistors here. And one of these I'm going to make a thermistor. I'm going to have what's going on in between going to the non-inverting input. Tell you what, I'll draw the other set in another colour, so that makes it a little bit clearer. And then we just have two more fixed resistors there. And that's going into my inverting input. And like I said, sometimes you might just see these lines just extending to the rails. And so we can say that this could be plus 9 volts up here. This could be 0 volts. We don't know. So because the output is connected to the 0 volt potential rail across here, that means that we're concerned about this here. This is going to be our V in going into our non-inverting input, just our positive input there. 
and who knows you might have a diode in there as well just to make sure that it goes one way uh, what do we want to have connected to our output here uh, seeing that's a thermistor shall we have a heater of some sort so I'm just going to put that in there that's my heater okay so what can we see here uh, let's say that we have a 100 ohm resistor there and a 100 ohm resistor there so if that's the case then we know that going into our inverting input we have 4.5 volts don't we because the 9 volts has been split evenly across the two resistors let's say that this is another 100 ohm resistor here as well the thermistor when it's hot it has a resistance of 50 ohms so how is the 9 volt split across these resistors here well it's effectively 2 to 1 so that means that going in here then we're going to have a v in of 9 split 2 to 1 that means we're going to have 3 volts going in here. So if we have 3 volts going into the positive terminal and 4.5 volts going into the negative terminal, that's the inverting input, then that means that the negative V in is greater than our positive V in. Therefore, we're not going to have plus 9 volts. We're going to have minus 9 volts. Like we said, the difference is going to be well, minus 1.5, but because the amplification factor is huge, then that means that it's going to be saturated but in the negative direction so we have that minus nine volts coming out what about when it's cold let's say that it goes to 200 ohms this time v in going in here is equal to six volts again split two to one by the other way around this time therefore the difference in our voltages is going to be plus 1.5 volts therefore v out because the positive input is greater than the negative input that's just going to be plus 9 volts saturated again so that means now that we have plus 9 volts across here so that means that the heater will turn on and we get some heat being produced so that's usually the main application of op amps that you will see at a level just if you're interested there are a couple more circuits like i said that you could have one is like this i'm not going to draw the whole circuit but what you can have is a resistor that is connecting the inverting input to the output so what we have is some feedback going on here what happens in this case is that if the v in gets bigger then that means that because of this feedback resistor here that feeds back into the inverting input so that means that the negative input gets bigger as well so actually what happens is that this actually makes sure that v out follows v in closely you might think that's a little bit pointless, but it does have its uses. And if you really want to know, we've also got the integration circuit, integration op-amp circuit. Instead of a feedback resistor, we have a capacitor that links the inverting input to the output. Oh, I got that the wrong way around. Basically what happens is that the V out will increase the longer there is an input voltage going into the non-inverting input there that's because as current flows out of the output it charges the capacitor and this reduces the amount of current that can go into the inverting input so that means that the v out increases over time and so because it is dependent on time you can use that to do integration that's op amps. I hope I've covered everything for you guys. If there's anything that you think I missed or if you have any questions, then pop them in a comment down below and I'll see you next time.